So there was we're here and this is going to be a slightly different video as you can tell it's me and not the runescape screen so essentially what happened over the weekend was my keyboard stopped working or at least it stopped working a hundred percent of the time as four of the keys two w s and x just intermittently don't work especially when i first start up the computer so i think when it's cold the resistor the resistance is not correct so it doesn't read that the key is pressed and two w s and x share a pin on the matrix keyboard mapping that's the i guess as far as my technical knowledge goes but then once i like mash on the keys or it starts heating up a little bit i think it softens it up and the resistance is now in a correct space so that is hardware damage and there's not much i can do apart from essentially getting the laptop repaired and that would mean probably a week or two without my laptop and then no content so what i decided to do instead was buy a new keyboard and i got the razer ornata chroma looks pretty sick um it's a mechanical keyboard i've never had one before so it'll be a weird adjustment and to go alongside that i also got the Razer Death Adder Elite, which is like I was told a very good intro MMO mess. And it has two buttons on the side, which is what I wanted. So I can now have control and shift modifiers. So essentially what I'm going to be doing with this video is we're going to transition into the actual RuneScape client. And I am going to reset up all my keybinds and all my action bars be ready for modern pvm because what i did was when i first started pvming i was using revolution so i had all these weird key binds like you can see my first three abilities are q two and e instead of something normal like one two or three and it just it's a very janky mess and this gives me a new opportunity to restart my key binds because i have no muscle memory with this board and therefore i can get new muscle memory I'm also, as probably as you guys are watching this, I'm away at my cottage. So that gives me a good opportunity to do some solo PVM during the one or two hours I do play that, that day. And just kind of build up my muscle memory with the new keybinds. And then when I get back from the cottage about a week later, I'll be able to um, go group PVM without slowing people down. Because I don't like doing that. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get into the new keybinds. So I spent about an hour sitting down and plotted out my keybinds here. I allocated spots for six basics, thresholds, two ultimates, one flexibility. Uh, and that should cover off all of these styles. The idea with this was to make the majority of the keybinds happen with my left hand as I was starting to go over to like using 890 IOP, um, the parentheses, the comma, these all those sort of keys were getting into my key buttons and it was forcing my hand all the way over there. So I want to keep everything, um, pretty much everything on the line of like going seven down, uh, not cutting across that for key binds. The only change that had to be made to this from the final product is the mage flank and the range flank. The two of those uh, can't be used anymore because they would each require spots on uh, action bars and I don't have an ex enough extra action bar space as you can only have four extra action bars on the screen. So I had to put them all down into the similar keybind. So it's all going to be here on uh, shift Y for all three styles, which is kind of unfortunate because it would have been nice to just roll my fingers over to do the flank. So this is kind of hilarious, but because my record key was shift R and I was swapping to show off things, it stopped and started my recording when I didn't want it to. So for about 30 minutes of me talking through this, I didn't get any of it. So I'm just going to go over what I did. Essentially how I've designed this is that the middle here is where I click more keybind less while the outsides on two are the shift and control ranks so anything with shift is a switch or an ability to be associated with the shift 
anything with a control is kind of a or rarely used item. And I'll be having two keys on my mouse that represent shift and control. Therefore, I can just click those modifiers without having to worry about anything. Um, but now I'm in the process of building out my six action bars, one for each style. So this will be five through 10. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and finished off all of our action bars as action bars five through 10 represent the six different combat styles, the three different combat styles, and the two options of dual wield and melee. And they all follow a similar pattern of six basics kind of going from best to worst, but not exactly just the order I want them in. Um, then we have our three thresholds, again, kind of from best to worst. And then we have our two ultimates. The first ultimate will always be our damage boosting one. So Berserk, Sunshine, and Death Swiftness. So that way I can the same for all of them. And then the other one... It will be the um, other ultimate you would use with that style. Dual wield melee is probably the worst for a second ultimate as you would kind of never use frenzy, but there could be a future use for it. And then we have our flanks on shift T and shift Y. And then seven is the float ability, which for melee is barge. Then when we get over to uh, mage, it becomes tsunami. And then when we get over to range, it becomes bombardment. Now, on top of that, we also have our action bar binding set up for action bars five through 10. So if I swap over my weapon, for example, if I put my CGS on, it's gonna go right over to that action bar. And then if I put on my dual wield melee, it's gonna go over to that action bar. And it becomes very easy to swap back and forth. And I might get more into dual wield two hand swapping with melee now. So. Hoping that that works out well, but that's going to be all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something with how I set up my keybinds and kind of got a look into my setup now. If you like the content I'm producing, consider subscribing. If you like the video, leave a like. And apart from that, have a good one and I'll catch you next time.